Welcome to the Synapse Philosophy Group. We are jamming and I'm, I'm really excited because we have gotten through the 33 principles. And I had the wise idea today is to loop back and yeah. go to the major premise, right? Principle number one, and then discuss it. What do we get out of it now that we've gone through full circle of the philosophy of the 33 principles in Stevenson's textbook in the senior text, which I thought was eloquently done. Um, Stevenson took us on a great journey and I really thought it was, you know, I have a new perspective of the 33 principles now going through step-by-step step and discussing it from the senior text. Because in the past, I just looked at it in the freshman text and it goes into some depth, but it's not deep enough for me. And uh, we've got a lot of good insights and uh, I'm excited to go into this right now. And let me just see. All right. Um, the major premise. And I also thought of, we could go back and look at the very beginning of the normal complete cycle. If we have time today. Because on, on, on that note, and I yeah. went back and looked, and actually there's a, a, a very interestingly on page 63 of the freshman text, it, there's a resume of the normal complete cycle, and what it does is effectively go through the entire 33 principles. Mm. Yeah. Well, let's, so let's just a note. We'll get, gonna, we get to that, we get to that, but that's just, gonna, I found that I'm interesting. Gonna, I'm going to paper clip it. I don't have it in my outline of things that we've done. I've got two books with outlines left and right of all the work that we have done. And uh, I'm excited about it. How about we start? Okay. Sounds good. Page 236, the major premise, principle number one, article 24. The uni universal intelligence is in all matter and continually gives to it all its properties and actions. Now, we broke down universal intelligence, innate intelligence, material. We went a little bit into educated intelligence. Since it is universal, universal it is common to every locality. Well, let me let somebody's coming in, Aaron, from, from Peru. All right. Wow, nice. Let me, let me say hello. Aaron, good to see you, man. I'm glad you're here. All right. So universal intelligence is in all matter and continually gives to it all its properties and actions. Since it is universal, it is common to every locality. Therefore, it is in anything and everything that is in the same locality. In the beginning, it created matter. Uh, it did not then abandon matter, but creates or unfolds thoughts for it for it every moment. Thoughts for it every moment. This solicitude maintains matter in existence. The physical properties which matter has are but force. Energy in parentheses continually gives to it by intelligence. All right. Aaron, good to see you. I'm glad you joined us from Peru. And what we're doing is we're, we've finished the 33 principles. We're touching back on the major premise right now, principle number one. And what we do is discuss it. Glad to have you in with us. Okay, so what do you guys feel? What did you get from that just now? How is your perspective different now than it was five months ago when we started this? <laughs> Hard to believe. I can't believe it either. Five months. And we've had, you know, dozens of people in and out, and we've had a core group. Well, the way I see it, and getting a perspective of universal intelligence, universal intelligence is the creator. It gives its energy for creation and projecting that where we have innate intelligence to hold it all together which is the creation is the way I look at it. And material is just as important as the spiritual because that's spiritual intelligence to be able to hold it all together and create a living being. 
At any time we lose that, it all falls apart. Here we go. Logan's coming in right now, too. What do you guys feel? Yeah. Logan, glad, glad to have you. Glad you made it. There's, uh, you know, it, it, the, I was saying earlier to, to Hague, there's a, I was listening to an interesting uh, podcast today of, of, with Deepak Chopra talking to a guy named Misho Kukaku, who, who came up with string theory. He talks about talks vibration about and uh, that everything is vibration, everything is tone. And, and that what we need to think about is getting beyond our, our limited concept of physicality and the, the idea that we are all intelligence manifesting in a, in a material, in a material way. Yes. They were all, they were all that our vibration and we change it by what we, by what we do and conceive and what we just by talking to each other tonight, we'll change ourselves and our vibration changes. And in that way, we become different people and we affect the world in a different way and we affect the universe in a different way. And that universal intelligence is what we're talking about, that organizing factor that today is, oddly enough, I don't know if anybody else gets emails from Chris Kent, but I mean, uh, Facebook with Chris Kent, but he, he, he said, happy Fibonacci day. And Fibonacci uh, is the, uh, concept is, is a series Fibonacci numbers create a natural spiral and it's and it's and it's in everything that you see and ultimately they, they line you can line up faces that way it's like the way pineapples grow the way the the, the seeds in the in a sunflower are yeah and it's, and it's all organized and how's that work you know it's it's there's a there's an intelligence that's that's everywhere that, you that, know, allow, that creates it that makes it all happen it if it wasn't an intelligence, what would we have? If it wasn't organized, what would it be? It would just, we would just have a mess. You know, it, it takes, you think about just the architect that designed your home that you live in or the place that you work in. It has to have some level of order to be able to be usable. And just like being orderly within this body, it has to have some level of order to be usable. The vertebra didn't shape themselves by mistake. Structure determines the function. So in, in the architectural system, we have to create the function in our minds first. It has to have usable ideas and usable function. I love that, Alan. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Life as chiropractic sees it is a quality of character. We're in the Stevenson's textbook, page 236, uh, last paragraph, or midway through the, the second and last paragraph. Chiropractic sees it is a quality or character, a character that matter may have, occasioned by the presence of or attention of intelligence, having continuation or duration involving time. All things take time. See Webster. No lesser agency than universal intelligence can prevent any of these things, but the perfect expression of intelligence, or according to what man wants, may be prevented by the uh, limitations of matter. Even this in the universal law is a phase of universal cycle. Now, I, we were at the zoo with my kids yesterday. Um, I, we have a really awesome little zoo near us. And they have these sand, sand sculptures. And some of them are really 20 feet tall. And what happens with the sand sculptures, it's the, the, the difference between the sand at the beach and the sand that they use. The sand sticks together better. The structure helps it function better to what they need. So I thought the whole time of universal force, it took an intelligence to create this. But the way the matter is, it's intelligent and you know it's a usable functional material and without the material none of it would have happened properly or having the proper material material for building blocks so that's where i thought of possibly the limitation of matter 
for certain bits of matter, they have a limitation. You can't build 20 foot tall sand sculptures. You have to write the right type of sand to do it or matter to build a living being. Anybody else get some insights? How do you feel now that we've done 33 principles? Go ahead. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask, uh, <clears throat> you said, what did that make you think of? You know, I said something, but my mic was muted. And oh, my mistake. <clears throat> no, my, I mean, on my side. So you didn't hear me. But I just got a, a message about the Congregation of Universal Wisdom. Have you got, has any of you heard that? Is that the chiropractic church that they started? Yeah, I, I don't know. I just got yeah. it from a chiropractor to get exemption from the vaccine, yeah. I guess. Yeah. It says it's the Congregation of Universal Wisdom is a religious order that believes in the supreme master of all levels in creation and all life of the universe. It is the guide or principle with, by which all mankind shapes shall aspire to live. A little more? Yeah, go ahead. It, it is the, it's almost done. It is the belief of the members of the congregation that the upheaval of morals and inferiority of human values have been the result of a departure of mankind from the ideas expressed by universal wisdom. This has resulted in sick and decaying society whose redemption can only be brought about by a blending of universal intelligence with man's innate mind. That's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's, and so I, I have heard of that church. If people have been getting more, trying to get more involved in it because of this whole vaccine thing. And someone just came up to me and talked, we were talking about that just recently. And I can't remember who it was, but you know, it's awesome. What does that mean to you? I think it just means like number one, like principle number one, it has, you know, a lot with the universal intelligence. And then at the end it gets into innate well, no, universal attentions and innate, the innate mind. So, you know, it, I, takes the, it takes the innate mind. Universal forces we're talking about are destructive. They want to bring, you know, this material back into, you know, the, the recycle this energy. Unsolicitous. Unsolicitous. So, and innate forces are holding it all together and protecting it. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Hi, we, yeah. Mark Myers. Yeah. Oh. I know. And uh, where where was it? In Melbourne. Melbourne, uh, Mel Florida. Yeah. Oh, Melbourne. good to see you. Nice to see you again too. <laughs> okay. Hopefully, we'll see you again in Melbourne again. Okay. Yes, sure. So the universe, the, the innate forces are holding the universal forces at bay. We're an expression of those in forces. We can't have one without. You can't, you know, now that I just thought of this, can you have innate without universal? No. Can you have universal without innate? Yes. Okay. That's an interesting type of, uh, you know, interesting thought. So, uh, you know, when we're, you know, in my morning talk this morning, we did with, you know, our group we're thinking about what is this person that we you know making it practical again what is happening when we're stepping up to this person in front of us that's an expression of this universal force which i call god dd called it god stevenson called it god bj called it god and that's an expression of life in that individual how are we walking up to that table how are we walking up to that person in reverence or are we looking at it as you know, a cash register. Are we looking at it as I'm trying to fix part of God or can I go and serve this being? To me, it's walking up to a, an altar. It's walking into a church. Each person I put my hand on them, I hope I am giving that level of reverence towards it. Yeah. And I think that's what Dee Dee Palmer in the um, uh, 1914 book that's what he was trying to bring to us and say, this is your moral and religious duty because you're caring for that spirit within that person. You're caring for more than the flesh. You're caring for the spiritual intelligence, which is God. Did you get anything out of that, Logan, this morning? I'm seeing if he's on there. 
<laughs> muted, so you can't tell. He might be. Talking That's right. <laughs> So, you know, uh, we've been doing this for a couple of years now, and we've had, we've gone through a lot of different things from in chiropractic philosophy. I planned on starting in volume one, BJ Palmer's philosophy book um, from 1906. I can't find the PDF. I really thought I had that PDF. I, I bet it's on another computer somewhere. But going back to 1910 and Dee Dee Palmer's work is, I feel, the most valuable thing we can do. So partly I wanted to do this a little bit of the major premise, principle number one, get an idea of, you know, how much have we learned in five months of going, five months, five months of doing the 33 principles. We really broke them down really well. The most I have ever read the 33 principles. I think taking this back to Dee Dee now would be poignant and a very powerful thing for us to do. What are your feelings and opinions? I'm good with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was pretty waiting for somebody to say yes, I'll say yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so how do we get it back to Dee Dee? We're getting we back to Dee Dee. Well, we worked on 201910 for a while. He just wants to go even further. So, <laughs> 1910. The, yeah. I, I, I outlined it partly with a you know a paper plate and some other things, but I <laughs> outlined these books. And uh, so um, we're going to go through. I think we left on, off on page 81, somewhere around there. Okay. And oh, what, what, what book was that? This is Dee Dee Palmer's 1910. 1910. Okay. Correct. The chiropractor's adjuster. The chiropractor. I, I have most of the green book, so I'd like to get on the same page as you guys. What eight, page 80? I, I, eight, I think Are you going there 80. now, Hig? Pardon? Are you going there now? No, I'm not going there now. Probably not today. Okay. <laughs> <Leave now. laughs> you confused me. Excuse me. No, but we're, we're discussing this of where to go next, everybody. Oh, I, I oh, thought we would get a little bit more out of everyone for the major premise right now. So now I'm dipping into where we're going next, okay? And, uh, you know, page 80, I think, is where we're, where we're going to start from because I have a few big notes there, and uh, we can go into uh, the philosophy of D.D. Palmer, which – is the basis of everything. BJ, you know, he broke off from his father's philosophical, philosophical work and did a lot of more of his scientific work, which was very valid, very important stuff at the time. And I really like it, but I would prefer, I want to know what the father of chiropractic really has to say. And I want to discuss it. I want to break it down. And uh, we can get a, a finite view of really what BJ DD was talking about. And what Alan was talking about, this man talking about string theory was, you know, talking the same language as DD Palmer and their vibration of the universe. Everything is based upon tone. And DD didn't know how to speak in quantum physics because it wasn't invented yet. It wasn't another 30 or 40 years for Schrodinger and his cat. And, uh, you know, he's talking in quantum language before quantum language is invented. So understanding that, I think, can really give us an enhancement in our own service of chiropractic. Okay? So let's flip over to the normal complete cycle. What do you guys think? Okay, Doug. So we have a few so minutes. You might as well read a little more philosophy, all right? The first, and th this is why I want, I was going to flip-flop between that and the normal complete cycle because they relate to each other. The first step of the normal complete cycle, this is page 17 in Stevenson's. Infinite intelligence that is the, the infinite intelligence that is the source of everything in the universe. The infinite intelligence pervading all spaces and matter, which creates and governs all things, both material and immaterial. I think I think Carol's making some noise. No, or Carol, you don't mind. I just I just muted you just from that ta oh. tapping. Okay. It occupies all spaces and distance. 
It has ex uh, existed always. It is older, wiser, greater, stronger, and better than anything in the universe. It created everything, and it must have been first and indefinitely superior in order to do it. It must be. It must have been in. Must have, excuse me. It must have been and is very intelligent. Having these virtues, it must have never made a mistake, and therefore was always right. That's a big, heavy, omnipotent statement, right? About the omnipotence of this universal intelligence. Being always right is always good. Being infinitely good is God. See Webster's definition of God. Being infinite, no one can define it. Actually, one can get only a finite idea of it from the finite amount of manifestation we're able to perceive. This intelligence is not limited. It is who it is we who are limited in perception. Absolutely. That's principle 5, 18, and 24. It endows living things with localized power, in parentheses, innate intelligence, as a higher manifestation of forces. I mean, I just love the way we get a, the way Stevenson puts it out for us. It's, you know, it's, it's not spiritually religious. It's saying you have reverence for God, the universal intelligence in all things. I think it's wonderful. Anybody else? Anybody have any insights? You want to have any comments? I'm going to read step two. Step two of the normal complete cycle, innate intelligence. That's why these two are so important. And most, you never read them. And people don't read them. They should. The localized or inborn intelligence of a living thing, a finite portion of universal intelligence in, in a finite portion of matter, whose mission it is to keep the matter in active organization, just like we talked about. Individualized universal intelligence, a segment of universal intelligence, which, though a part of it, is distinct from it. Principle 20, figure six. While innate intelligence is a finite portion of universal intelligence, it represents the amount of intention that universal dun, da, 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 intelligence is given to the amount of matter. All matter is, is blessed with the caretaking of the supreme intelligence. And if this, in this case, for one moment, matter would cease to exist. Now, I'm going to stop there just for a moment. You see how big it is. Alan, you're, you're muted. The button here, sorry. The, uh, you, you misread, I'm sorry, just slightly. It said, if, if this ceases for one moment, matter would cease to exist. What did I say? It, it, it's something else, you said cases or something. Oh, not okay. Cases. So, <laughs> but, that's, but that's significant. So if somebody's listening on later on, I want them to get the right word. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. The, uh, you see how it, it, it's it, it, he's laying it out to us of how big it is of what we're doing. Chiropractic is so important. It's not about the cash register ringing, the side effect. Uh, you know, Parker used to say the side effect of service is wealth. When we're serving at this level, the spiritual level, none of those things matter. It'll come to you. It's given to you. It's, it's biblical. So I feel reverence every time I step up to a person. I, I feel blessed to be a chiropractor every minute. Anybody else? I, I wish Steve was here because there was something I think that Danny Knowles put up recently that I responded to and said something about uh, innate being a part of, but apart from universal. And Steve came back and said, well, how can it be apart from? Well, it's, it's one of those and the word I want is not coming to me, but it's it it's a it's a it's an incongruity that we just can't understand. It's, oh, it's something figured. we can't quite grasp because yeah. it's it it it's part of universal, but it's apart from it. It's it it never is really apart from it, but it's but in us it acts separately from universal in some ways. It has other authority, if you will. Um, 
and that's and it, but it says it right here, and I I couldn't have cited this before this night, uh, but now I could go back to Steve and say this is where I got that from. <laughs> and Ron, you had your hand stand, uh, hand up. You're muted. You're muted. Yeah, I I just said I agree. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> Any insights? Anything we want clarity on? Well, when we're talking about this, you know, it is, why did, why did Stevenson put this out here for us? Because this is, a, you know, this is, did he have the end in mind? Why did he write this book about these things? About Because this is all about universal intelligence and spiritual intelligence. And then he has some anatomy thrown in there. Why do you think? I'll tell you what I think. I think he gave us this mission. He gave us a mission in chiropractic to step up to our game, get out and serve the people, not fooling around, right? This isn't a, you know, a, a, a fun kids game to play. This is something really serious, not to get them out of back pain, but to help transform their life to become actually more, more conscious of their own spirituality, which is what Didi was really trying to get to us as well, is the more they become conscious of their, the I am, their true inner self, and not who I think I am from my educated brain. BJ wrote most of his books about that, really. The greater level of service we're giving, that's the something extra. The more we're changing this world, more that we're interactive to transforming the lives of people into a greater good. Absolutely. I'm going to look for a book. One second, Alan. Go ahead. No, no. I was looking for something myself here. <laughs> my mentor, Pasquale, I read this this morning. I have it hanging on my wall in my, my downtown Melbourne office, that when people become more conscious of their own spirituality, of this, uh, the, the more they're going to come to chiropractic. And the more chiropractors understand, chiropractic is a spiritual act. We are transforming this world. Then magic happens. You know, I just, feel, I, I'm in awe of it. I'm in awe of our philosophy. I'm in awe that I'm, I'm even taking a part of it. And in reality, we're about the 1% because no one else is talking about this in chiropractic. Very few people are, are breaking down this philosophy. This group, you know, we've had dozens and dozens of people in and out of here for the past few years. And, you know, we have touched the lives of people around the planet. We've got students from, you know, Brazil, Mexico. Now we've got Peru. I'm so excited to have you here. And, uh, you know, that's it. What do you guys feel? I got something for you. Go ahead. All right. You're going to like this. This is from Stevenson's PHC paper. All right. And he's talking about it's true that it, it, uh, it is true that its texts, texts are few and its philosophy books are hard to understand. This is not because it is a, a complicated science, but because there has not been much time in this new science to get the philosophy accurately classified and clearly explained. It takes time to do this, and chiropractic is still young. The writing of any young science in any line are at first somewhat jumbled. We mentioned above, we mentioned above that nothing had ever been practiced before with attention to uh, the reason why. We say this because chiropractic has been used for generations before the Palmers were ever born, but it was not known as a science nor worked out, quote, with a well-defined system of philosophy and practice, unquote. It is not an inven invention, but a discovery. And he goes on. So that why did he write it out? In the why does this textbook got written down? Because he, after this, which was 1923, is when he wrote his paper. Uh, he took it upon himself, with BJ's blessing, to to get this stuff down for in a way that people could understand it. That's awesome. I didn't realize I never read that paper before because this is I, I just checked promised you a copy. I, I have to get it scanned and get it to you guys. Yeah, because he wrote this in 1927. Yeah, that's probably it. He saw the need. Let's get this down in a proper way because, you know, BJ was not the most eloquent writer. 
And sometimes he's very difficult to read. So, and, you know, he had his own way of thinking in the way his, his own brain worked. And, you know, Stevenson, I have, the, it's out of all the chiropractic books, it is the best written and easiest to read. Let's put it in yes. that sense. Yeah. I mean, BJ wrote in a style that is hard and, and to understand it, to gather, to, to put together at times. It's hard yeah. to read him sometimes. It really is. And he makes up his own words too. <laughs> So, uh, our own spelling of words. So, uh, you know, this was really good. We've come full circle and I really want, I didn't want to just jump out of Stevenson's. I want to do a little bit, a little bit more and, uh, really just kind of hit it home. And I think we've done it properly and we've done it justice in this period of, uh, you know, really breaking down Stevenson's. Um, that's all I have for tonight. And, if you guys have anything else, you know, we can go through that. But next week, let's plan on page 80 of Dee Dee's 1910. Okay. Okay. I was just gonna ask that. What 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 can I read or what can I bring? I'm on my office now. A lot of my books are at my house. Um, well, that's it. 1910. Okay. If you have that, and what we do is we read it, we mm -hmm. break it down, we talk about it, we discuss it, and uh, you know, we are building in that energy of that so it's open discussion there is no bad questions or you know what have you what's right for you is right for you okay so uh you know if you want to pre-read it that would be helpful the one thing about this book is that dd is reading papers or writing papers that other chiropractors are printing and then he sets them straight. That's why it's the chiropractor's adjuster is getting us back to true north. Yeah, so so sometimes it's it hard to understand. Yeah, it makes it a little confusing. <laughs> That's why reading it as a group is actually very, very helpful. Right. So I get a lot out of it. I've read it. I've read most of it um, and I've outlined quite a bit, but it's been a number of years since I've done it. So I like getting back into it and remembering it. I have an outline of the volume one. And I know I have that PDF on some computer somewhere and I will find it before the year end. Okay. And we'll get to volume one, but this is actually volume one, 1910 really, I feel is the true first volume of chiropractic philosophy. Um, BJ and I, um, my, my mentor, Pasquale Sarasoli, I started outlining that in 19, uh, no, in 2002, and uh, he said, Dee Dee said it wasn't ready yet. He didn't want us to read it. Start over here. He was 95 years old at that time. And he was giving me a right hook in the jaw. Don't think about that stuff. Go to where we need to go. But now I really want to read it even more. So, <laughs> all right, everybody. It is a wrap for tonight. Anybody have any last bits or pieces? Everybody have a good Thanksgiving. Yes, I forgot it's Thanksgiving. Peru, you're already named Turkey down there. Peru is Turkey in Spanish. <laughs> Pavo. Pavo. Oh, it was Paru in Portuguese then. Something I thought it was Paru. Yeah. Uh, we're at meet, so I'm meeting with some Brazilians, so one from Canada um, and uh, United States, two guys. I mean, we got, and two guys from Spain. So there's seven or not, nine, depending if the Brazilian guys go. Very cool. That's nice. Uh, but, uh, I'll, I'll have to, uh, what's that? No, go on. I was going to say, I'll have to bring a, a green book or something to show them just to get them. Maybe I'll, I'll I'm going to look for which ones I have. I don't have all of them, but I have a lot of them. So I can bring and share with the group. Yeah, that's really good. That's the way you do it, you know, and uh, that's what we're doing here is, is breaking it down and just, you know, we've had students from everywhere and just helping them understand what this, how powerful this philosophy is and how in-depth it is. DD, I feel, has the greatest energy. When we're reading this, the energy just really comes out of that. Well, I'm proud of you. Good job. Keeping the spirit alive in Peru until you get to Florida. Well, I wouldn't have had the idea if I didn't come on here and watch you guys tonight and 
now I got the idea. So I'll bring the, I'll read, a, I'll pick a selection to read to the find group. Something that, find something to stimulate them to talk about. Yeah, that's a good idea. I love it. Something you use, it doesn't necessarily have to be one of the others. Use the textbook, make, keep it simple for them. Yeah. The Stevenson, you mean? Yeah. Do okay. this, the, nor, the normal complete cycle in Stevenson's, it's at the beginning. You know, this is page 17, it starts on. And it really, the normal complete cycle really gives a good foundation of chiropractic philosophy of innate intelligence, universal intelligence, spirit all those type of things. And uh, that's why I went back on it today because we've already, we've actually already done the whole normal complete cycle in this group. I just wanted to tie it into the 33 principles, but it's a good place to start. Stevenson's is a great place to start. You know, it really is. Well, you guys have a fantastic Thanksgiving. Love yeah, and we'll appreciate you. You. We, do this, we do this every Tuesday at the same time. Tuesday, 8, 8, 8 30. And I no hope Carol part. talks next time. What's that? I hope Carol, Carol talks next time. Carol we do too. She's our much. local PHC. Yeah. <laughs> okay. She is. All right. God bless you guys. Okay. I love and appreciate you. Have a fantastic night. Okay. Nice to meet you, Alan. See nice to meet you, Aaron. We'll see you soon. Okay. Good night. Bye, Good night. Carol.